Fuchs. It's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your kids are? Live from Center City in Philadelphia, this is Fox 29 News at 10. Hello everyone, we have a lot to cover tonight on the Fox 29 News at 10. I'm Carolee Halkett. A Northeast Philly man caught up in a criminal threat against a congressman. Look at this, if you've seen his YouTube videos, they're disturbing. But we talked to some of his neighbors. Now this guy's issues are beyond political. Sharon Crowley has this one covered tonight. Also, did you see that political cartoon that takes a shot at the Pope in today's daily news? It's raising eyebrows, but not really in the Catholic community. A lot of pressure on the Vatican right now as the church deals with yet another sex abuse scandal. But first tonight, the Northeast Philadelphia man accused of threatening to kill a Virginia congressman. Sharon Crowley joining us now. Now, Sharon, you spoke to some relieved neighbors tonight. They've uh, been concerned about him for years, they say. Yeah, Carrie Lee, afraid of him is what they told me, and they've called police dozens of times, a number of neighbors over the past couple of years. They all believe that he is mentally ill, and in fact, at a hearing today, a judge ordered a psychiatric evaluation. He is facing very serious charges. I'm the Messiah. He told all of us he's our Lord. The Jesus. And he was going to blow up the whole block this weekend. And thank God the FBI came. Neighbors here in Northeast Philadelphia say they are not surprised Norman Laboon has been accused of threatening to kill U.S. Congressman Eric Cantor on a YouTube video. Because it's been an ongoing thing for about two years with him. You know, he's outside praying, making threats to everybody. We've called the cops many times. We thought it was just something that was on the block. Messiah. We didn't know he was taking it worldwide and making threats on YouTube. Oh boy, you were scared. <laughs> His neighbors say he often made threatening comments. Neighbors say he didn't have a job. Instead, he collected disability checks and spent his time, they say, creating scary videos like this one on the Internet. Checkpoint. No checkpoints. And one of those videos caught the attention of the FBI. The federal indictment says Laboon threatened to kill the Virginia congressman and hurt his family. The feds say Laboon is heard saying, quote, you receive my bullets in your office. Remember, they will be placed in your heads. When you're a public figure. Fred TC is a former federal prosecutor. Prosecutor. You have to take his statements very seriously, and if we take his statements very seriously, he's extremely dangerous. Laboon lived with another man, and that man's brother asked that we not show his face, you going on. though he says he called the police on Laboon many times. It's been an ongoing issue for two years. He's been making the videos, threatening different people like um, the Pope, Obama, other congressmen, all of you, stating that they're all going to die, they're an abomination, they're the devil. You will not survive. A lot of relief in that neighborhood tonight. Now, the congressman reported last week that someone had put a bullet through his offices in Richmond, Virginia, and uh, the federal investigators do not believe Laboon is connected, Carrie Lee, to that case. Sharon, speaking of the congressman, is uh, Cantor talking tonight? Well, we did reach out to his campaign office, and uh, his press person emailed me back and said, at this point, he's not making any comment about Laboon's arrest. And that is fairly common practice when we talk with the former federal prosecutor. He says, you know, before a case is tried, it's unlikely he would make a public statement about it. All right, Sharon Crowley, live for us tonight. Thank you. So the weekend started out with a celebration at Plymouth White Marsh High School and ended in tragedy. A car hit 17-year-old student Denise Cotetta last night in the pouring rain near the high school. The driver did not even stop, but police quickly caught up with him and say he is cooperating now. The district attorney says Cotetta had been out with friends, possibly celebrating a basketball championship. It's certainly been uh, widely known that the, uh, the school basketball team had just won the state championship. Uh, there were some activity surrounding that and, and we're trying to really figure out exactly where she had been and what she had been doing. Risa Furman there and as she says she's waiting for blood test results to reveal whether alcohol played a role in this accident. Police have not filed any charges. A jury convicted a kennel owner of neglecting dozens of cats and dogs. Skip Eckhart was found guilty of two counts of animal cruelty. Prosecutors say he ignored filthy conditions at his almost heaven kennel in Upper Milford Township, Pennsylvania. Eckhart's attorney says he was unfairly targeted by animal welfare activists. He now faces up to five years in prison. A city licenses an inspection worker among three people arrested in a robbery in West Mount Airy. Police say the three broke into a home on West Mount Pleasant Street. They allegedly tied up the homeowner and stole money and jewelry. 
Police caught up with them a few miles away in Olney. The three have not been charged in that case. Delaware County District Magistrate David Murphy is accused of forging signatures on a nomination petition and then submitting it to the election board. The district attorney says it was an attempt to keep the judgeship he already holds. Murphy is facing several felony charges, including forgery and identity theft. His friend Deborah West is also facing charges. It is Holy Week for Catholics all around the globe. And as Pope Benedict XVI faces new criticism for his handling of the priest sex abuse crisis, a new cartoon about it showed up in today's Daily News. Did you check it out? Look here. The cartoon shows the Pope with his eyes covered as a priest chases a small boy in the background. Now it speaks to some people's claims that the Pope turned a blind eye or failed to see priest sex abuse when he headed up the office that oversees Catholic doctrine. So where is the outrage over this cartoon? Our Fox 29's Joyce Evans is live in Center City, actually back here in the newsroom with that part of the story. Joyce. Well, Carrie Lee, we went out and about and the Daily News was ready for their phones to ring off the hook over this one, but they didn't. So we showed it to people randomly on the street. Wow. I did not do it to rub anybody's face in it. <laughs> My cartoon and the stories aren't an attack on all Catholics. They are of, they are a criticism of a cover-up of um, information that is now dribbling out. The cartoon hit the pages of the Daily News today, one day after a small number of people overseas called for the Pope's resignation. Catholic scholar Dr. John Haas insists those calls and other criticisms from around the world are not justified. They would love to see the church uh, discredited. And uh, I'm not saying these things haven't occurred within the church, but they will seize upon these to, to bring discredit upon the church. We thought for sure people would be outraged by Signe uh, Wilkinson's really nice. editorial cartoon. What do you think about it? Oh, I think it's fair, Michael. I think it's unfair and insensitive. I think they're blind from the start and the end. You think? I know. He sees nothing. You're Catholic? Yes. You don't find it offensive? It's a little truthful, isn't it? It's making light of a situation that I don't think people will make light of, but I don't think there's anything terribly offensive about it. We were surprised, and so was the Pulitzer Prize-winning cartoonist. She didn't get one call. First times I did cartoons on it in the early 90s, it did get a big reaction. But I think now it's quite clear that this um, this is a this is not a one-off problem. This is a, a systematic problem. The same reason Wilkinson believes nobody called outraged about this cartoon. She ran this after the so-called Jihad Jane was picked up on charges she wanted to kill a cartoonist overseas. It's a cartoon. It's not going to hurt me. <laughs> well, experts I spoke with, religious experts over the phone, said today that even if more people are offended by that and other things, they may be keeping it to themselves in light of how long that church scandal has gone on. Carrie Lee? Interesting point. Joyce in the newsroom, thank you. You know, the cartoon comes in the midst of Holy Week in the Catholic faith and adds more fuel to the fire surrounding the church's sex abuse scandal. Joining us now to talk about the controversy is Rocco Palmo, Catholic writer, columnist, and commentator. Rocco, thanks for coming in tonight. Anytime, Carrie. Thank you. You just saw the story we ran before you talking about where's the outrage. Tell us about the cartoon. Where do you think the outrage is? Why aren't people that upset? Well, I think first off, people have, you know, see it's not necessarily productive to shoot the messenger. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, just speaking for myself, and I'm sure a lot of people out there, not just Catholics, but people of goodwill, there's a sense of, of heartbreak at the abuse, you know, and, and um, that, and, you know, the kids were hurt, and that as a church, we still have a lot of work to do to keep making things better as best we can. So maybe it's bringing out a different kind of emotion. You know, Rocco, last week the Pope sent a letter to Catholics in Ireland. It was very critical of Irish bishops for their failure to stop abuse of priests, and that's pretty unprecedented, isn't it, for a Pope to take such a strong stand so publicly like that? Uh, it's absolutely unprecedented, Kerry. It's, uh, never has a full papal document ever been entrusted, you know, or been dedicated to the matter of sexual abuse. And, and the Pope has actually been accepting over the last couple of weeks resignations of Irish bishops who was found either by government inquiries or the press had 
participated in cover-ups and we could possibly see sometime within the next couple weeks the resignation of the only Catholic Cardinal in Ireland, the successor of St. Patrick himself. What a headline. All right, speak to this. There are still those that take issue with his handling of sex abuse cases, both when he was Archbishop of Munich and when he headed the Vatican's doctrinal office. Are those fair criticisms? Uh, well, I think, you know, it's, it's over time. Uh, the Vatican really began kind of getting religion on sex abuse, if you will, in the 1990s, late 1990s. Before then, it was mostly handled by local bishops and clearly not always with the best of results. But since 2001, when the now Pope's former office, only then were they able to take on the allegations and really begin to address them uh, universally. And since then, the Pope's presided over the defrocking of 3,000 priests from around the world. So of those complaints, 80% of them immediate defrocking, the other 20% were entrusted to a church tribunal, which most of the time would find the priests guilty and, and again, remove all of them from ministry for life. And that there is a small contingent of people calling for the Pope to resign. Is that fair or overreacting? I think the, you know, the Pope himself has said that the first order of business here, in whatever case, whatever scenario, is to establish the truth of what happened, bring healing to the victims. The truth of these cases is uh, still coming out, so I think it's important to see where it goes, but uh, most of all to remember that the only way Catholics can and society can build a better church is sticking within it, and not uh, uh, looking in from outside. And a lot of people are wondering how they'll move forward, how they'll fix the problem. We'll have to have you come back and talk about that. We're out of time. Rocco Palmo, thanks for coming in tonight. Thank you, Carrie. Anytime. All right, switching gears now. A lot of rain causing a lot of problems throughout the area. A live look tonight at Admiral Wilson Boulevard. This is in New Jersey, of course, flooded out earlier today with all the rain that fell. Meteorologist Krista Quinn in with us tonight, joining us with a first look at the forecast. Krista, more to come? More to come, Carrie Lee. Just like last night, the heavy rain will be plaguing mainly the eastern portions of the viewing area east of Philadelphia, where it's raining right now quite heavily throughout the state of New Jersey. And the rest of us are going to be seeing the rain, though, throughout the overnight hours. We could see one to two inches of additional rainfall. We'll zoom in just a little bit closer to show the heaviest pockets of rain moving through the central portion of the state of New Jersey. Now, we are going to have some more flooding potential overnight like I said, we still have some flood watches and warnings to talk about. Most of the area under a flood watch through the day tomorrow, but a flood warning in the bright green area is still in effect for coastal New Jersey. We're going to be talking in a few minutes about coastal flooding, but we're also going to be talking about a fantastic holiday weekend coming up. I'll have all the details in just a few. Carrie Lee. We better stick around for that then. Krista, thank you. A lot more for you ahead in the next hour. The FBI steps in to stop what they call a Christian militia group plotting to kill police officers. Back with more on that in a moment. Also, 200 seniors in one local high school alone may not graduate 200. The problem is keeping them from pomp and circumstance coming up next. First faithful celebrating Passover tonight in Society Hill. Zahav, the Israeli restaurant, served a festive Seder menu in honor of the first night of Passover. The annual Jewish celebration continues until April 5th. Overnight rain and flooding could spell trouble for your morning commute. Turn us on when you wake up. Weather and traffic updates all morning long on Good Day. And get this, we're now starting at 4.30 in the morning. Have a good day all day. Wake up and get your local news, weather, and traffic. You had a good day. Celebrate Empire's 50th anniversary with our gift to you. Free installation on quality name brand carpet. Shop at home and enjoy the wide selection, great prices, and next day installation Empire is famous for, with no interest for a year. Plus, right now, we'll install your new carpet absolutely free. It's our gift to you. But hurry, free installation won't last long. Call today. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE Today. Get Nissan quality now. Get safety now. Get savings now. This is Nissan Now, a sales event with our best deals ever on our strongest lineup ever. 0% financing on every sedan, crossover, truck, and SUV. Plus, lease Ultima, $199 a month. Hurry, event ends March 31st. Get to Nissan Now. Save at Wegmans Pharmacy now, along with our free antibiotics program, we offer $4.30 day and $10.90 day prescriptions on nearly 350 generic drugs. It's easy to switch with no additional fees. Wegmans Pharmacy, every day you get our best. Hi, you canceled your cable service? Finally. Good riddance. Hi, 
Hi, I'm from Xfinity, here to tell you about our exciting new Xfinity service. Is this a joke? No, sir, Xfinity is not a joke. It's an exciting new brand that we just invented when we wanted. Don't be fooled. Xfinity is Comcast. And Verizon Fios has four times more very satisfied customers than Comcast. This is beyond cable. This is Fios. When your life is in danger, leave everything to chance. So what, we make them think we jumped? Yeah. How? By jumping. Your discretion advised, human targets. Wednesday at 8 on Fox 29. You should take your clothes off, too. Okay. A student in Lower Marion says school officials used his school-issued laptop to spy on him. And now the case has Senator Arlen Specter calling for stronger privacy laws. At a Senate subcommittee hearing in Philadelphia today, Senator Specter said the laws on the books right now don't adequately address concerns in an era when cell phone and laptop cameras have become the norm. Uh, oral communications are covered, but if it is a picture and there are no words, it is not covered. And a picture can be just as evasive on privacy as a statement. A statement written by Blake Robbins was read at the hearing at the Harriton High, uh, the Harriton High student sued his school for secretly viewing him inside his home. All right, if a bus driver has a pass that involves accidents or incidents, Pennsylvania school districts are now going to know about it. This is a good thing. PennDOT is putting a new policy into place that gives districts full access to a driver's history. Montgomery County state lawmakers called for the change after this deadly crash. Look at that. It happened near Perkiomen Valley Middle School in Lower Frederick last month. The bus hit a car, killing the passenger. The school district did not know the bus driver was cited for careless driving in another deadly crash 10 years ago. Now we want to turn our attention to a troubling story out of Trenton. You see, more than 200 Trenton Central seniors could miss out on graduation if they don't pass one of two state exams. Now put that into perspective. That's more than half the senior class. Have you ever heard a number that high before? Well, it's a story reporter L.A. Parker first wrote about in the Trentonian. He joins us now live to talk about what's next. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Gary. How are you? I'm doing great, L.A., but what troubling uh, numbers you've brought to us. You know, first off, what do these students need to do to turn this around? Can they? They, they have a shot to do it, but the, the odds are not in their favor. They only have one more test that they can take that's going to count uh, uh, in, in their slot. Uh, they've already taken the HESPA, which is the High School Proficiency mm -hmm. Assessment Exam, uh, twice, and they're awaiting uh, results of one test uh, on um, uh, March 31st, this coming Wednesday, and then they took another test, that same test, in March, and those test results uh, are going to be presented uh, sometime in early June, about three weeks prior to uh, graduation. They also have one more shot at this when they take a test uh, later on in April, and those test scores also will be back in June sometime. So it's a difficult because they really only have one more test to take. A lot's riding on this. It sounds like, you know, I hate to be pessimistic, but it sounds like there might be a realistic chance then that the majority of those kids will not receive their diplomas in June. A very good chance. We're talking uh, almost two-thirds of the uh, Trenton Central High School uh, senior class may not graduate. Now, we're hearing that some of the students were pretty upset because of the way they were told about this. They felt like they were being ambushed. What do you know about that? Well, we have to also add one other piece to this story. There's something called that was called a, an SRA, and it was a special review assessment. At some point, the uh, education leaders in the state decided that students, some students did not test well, mm -hmm. and so they presented this SRA, which was an in-school test, and it was graded by teachers. But eventually, the numbers started to look skewed, and it looked like there was some hanky-panky going on with yeah. the SRA, and so they dropped it in favor of the, of the ASA. So uh, that's the issue. A lot of these kids thought that they were going to be able to skate through, uh, at the very end, like their other friends did last year, but uh, the state flipped the script on them and forced them to take this other test. You mix that, uh, you know, with the fact that this is a class that you say has already been decimated with an estimated 60% dropout rate. You know, it, it just, what, what's going on in Trenton? There's, there's trouble in River City, to borrow a line from, uh, from a famous Broadway show. We need some new leaders, we need some new direction, and we, as, as in Philadelphia and just about every urban area, we need involvement by our parents. Uh, we need a commitment by parents to education because we know that education is the one thing that, uh, that uh, produces success in life. Yeah, we need to get involved as parents. We hear this again and again. Let us know, by the way, how this story uh, progresses throughout the spring. Ellie Parker, thanks for coming in tonight. Appreciate it.
A big win for Delaware in the race to the top. The first state has been awarded 100 million federal dollars. Now the money will be used to improve student performance and transform struggling schools. Delaware and Tennessee, by the way, were selected from 16 finalists to receive the grants. Angry band members and their parents holding a demonstration tonight in Pittman, New Jersey. The state cut $1.6 million of funding to the school. The cuts caused the high school to lay off their band director and art teacher. Parents say laying off those teachers, it's unfair considering administrators who make three times more get to keep their jobs. In international news now, Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin vows to track down and kill the organizers of the suicide attacks this morning on Russian subways. Two women set off explosions at the heart of rush hour, and at least 38 people were killed. Dozens more were injured. Fox's Dana Lewis has the latest now from Moscow. One month ago, a Chechen rebel leader warned a war is coming to Russian cities. Today, terrorists appear to have delivered on that promise. 8 a.m., the height of rush hour, a female suicide bomber detonated an estimated nine pounds of explosives at the Lubyanka Metro. She was riding on the second car of an arriving train, the station under the building used by the Federal Security Service as their main headquarters. Pictures show mayhem underground, smoke, panic, two dozen people killed on the train and many others waiting on the platform. It's the deepest subway system in the world, and that made rescue efforts even more challenging. 42 minutes later, same line, four stations away. A second suicide bomber, also a woman, this time in the third car, detonates another bomb. More than a dozen killed in the Park Kulturi Metro. The city was paralyzed, subways shut down, roads blocked. Helicopters airlifted some of the wounded from the scene. Tonight, Russian President Medvedev visited the subway to place flowers and said of the bombers they're not human beings, they're animals. What they've done is a crime under any law, under any morality. We will find them all, he said. Russia's security chief said body fragments of the bombers point to a connection in the troubled area of Russia known as the Caucasus. It's where Chechen terrorists, some with links to Al-Qaeda, have fought a long and violent struggle with Russian authorities. As relatives of the dead and injured place flowers on the subway platforms, hardline Prime Minister Vladimir Putin vowed to find those who organized the attacks and, in his words, destroy them. And Russian authorities are saying now that they actually have video camera surveillance of the blasts themselves as they occurred in the subways today. Also surveillance cameras of the two suicide bombers and two other women who apparently escorted the bombers into the subways and then disappeared. They're being sought by the authorities tonight. In Moscow, Dana Lewis, Fox News. Investigators say a Christian militia group planned to kill a police officer and then bombed the funeral procession to kill more officers. The FBI rounded up nine alleged members of the group over the weekend in Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio, including the group's leader, David Stone, and his son. David Sr. did this. Yeah, he has a right to be punished for what he did, but he drags him. He drags my son into this, and it's wrong. According to an indictment, the group began military-style training in the Michigan woods in 2008. They learned how to fire weapons and build bombs. All right, a disturbing case out of Boston. Teens arrested in a case of bullying prosecutors say turned deadly. Next, we're talking to psychologist Trisha Ferrara, the licensed family therapist, talking about the growing problem and how families can help. The top need to know whether to take the umbrella or the anorak? There's an answer for that. Local weather info on your iPhone or BlackBerry. Go to myfoxphilly.com for more. What a headline this is. Nine teenagers in Massachusetts face serious charges for what prosecutors are calling the unrelenting bullying of another student. That classmate committed suicide. Phoebe Prince moved from Ireland to Northampton last fall. Now investigators say she was harassed almost immediately. Well, Prince hanged herself in January. Their conduct far exceeded the limits of normal teenage relationship related quarrels. You know, parents, you might be watching this thinking, is this something I have to worry about? Is my child capable of treating another classmate so badly? 
Trisha Ferrara, a licensed family therapist, is joining us uh, to talk more about this. Trisha, you know, I think as parents, we're pretty convinced our kids would never do anything like this, but someone's kids are. Yes, they certainly are, and I, I think all of our children are vulnerable to be put in a position to be tempted uh, to act in these ways that are really not only inappropriate, but uh, as we can see, deadly in some instances. You know, and there's so many disturbing things about this particular case. I think what's really frustrating is to learn that her mother went to the school officials twice to let them know what was going on. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so hard for students to come forward and speak out about something like this. What incentive do they have for doing that? Well, I mean, in this case, it certainly appears as though the adults may have let the kids down. Um, we have to do a better job of getting involved so that we understand that this technology is really amplifying and isolating these kids. It's amplifying their normal appetite for power, uh, status. Um, the game-changing piece here is that they're actively victimizing each other. They are seeking out children to target to such degrees that they are, you know, they're ending their lives over the pain that's being caused. So, I mean, the adults have to stand up and establish some credibility as being resources for these kids and have a better understanding that technology really circumvents what face-to-face -face interaction gives mm -hmm. us. And what that is, is an opportunity to feel for another person. You, you know, know Go ahead. Well, Tricia, you know, you touch on technology, such a big part of it. It was happening online in this situation. It was also happening at school. You know, investigators yeah. say most of the abuse was happening on school property dur during school hours. Yeah. How can we feel safe sending our children to school? Well, in this instance, it's really hard to say that you can. I mean, these school administrators, one of their major obligations is to provide a safe learning environment for our children. And I have to say, it seems like they failed here. Yeah, it sounds like it. I apologize. I know you're probably having a tough time hearing me there in the newsroom. We'll let you go, Trisha. But thank you so much for coming in. You know, it's just such a shame it took a teenage girl uh, yes. taking her life to get these bullies to stop. Trisha Ferrara, thanks for talking with us. Sure, Carrie. Thank you for the chance. Sure. We'll be right back. When the weather changes, you need to know. Fox 29 is your weather authority with the power to track storms, keep you informed, keep your family safe. Total team coverage. The weather authority on Fox 29. The power to lead. Sean decided to leave Comcast. I really thought Fios was going to be big. It ended up being a big chunk of my life spent on hold. I was even on hold with Verizon when a Comcast rep came to my door. Click, hung up on Verizon, and I'll never go back. At Comcast, we give you a great price, and we'll treat you right. After I got hooked back up, the sales rep stopped by just to see if I was happy. I was like, I love you, man. Welcome, welcome back, back, Sean. Welcome back, welcome back. A true leader gives more than anyone else, like more savings, because Ford Focus gives you incredible fuel efficiency with up to 35 miles per gallon. And now, during our leadership sales drive, your Quality Plus Ford dealer will give you 0% financing for 60 months. That's 0% financing for five years. Plus, Ford has quality that is unsurpassed by Honda and Toyota. And now, you can lease for only $159 a month. Ford Focus, great savings, and you'll pay less at the pump. The leadership sales drive at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. It's a pretty intense experience. I was diagnosed with cancer in the year 2000. I just wanted to be able to trust that the people I was with every day were pointing me in the right direction. Kennedy is now a member of the Penn Cancer Network. You go where the best medicine is, and the name gives you that confidence. Access to the full range of cancer care at Penn, plus Penn Radiation Oncology, now as close as Kennedy. You are counting on the people around you to help you get through the fight. Get Nissan quality now. Get safety now. Get savings now. This is Nissan Now. A sales event with our best deals ever on our strongest lineup ever. 0% financing on every sedan, crossover, truck, and SUV. Plus, lease Ultima, $199 a month. Hurry, event ends March 31st. Get to Nissan now. Honest pricing, it's the Boscov's guarantee. Here's proof. First time ever, $9.99 for Hastings and Smith Fashion Knit Tops in gorgeous spring colors. 50 to 70% off all sizes of 200 to 230 thread count sheet sets. $9.99 for these three and four piece complete sets. $3.99 for fabric and straw handbags from Bueno and more. 
A set of two Cuisinart stainless steel double wall coffee mugs, $5.99 for two. Honest pricing guaranteed at Boscov's. Hello again, everyone. Sarah Palin is at it again on Facebook. She's taking a jab at the critics who took issue with her political action committee's hit list last week. Now, the former governor of Alaska wrote about the NCAA tournament using terms such as strong weapons and big guns to describe the action on the court. Democrats have criticized the language at a time when lawmakers have reported receiving threats of violence for supporting the health care reform bill. Now Sarah Palin does have a point. We often talk about political battle lines and the fight on Capitol Hill and around the country. To a lot of voters, though, it's kind of getting ugly. So the question, is it turning people off or just getting people more involved? Well, let's talk to Mike Gallagher. He's joining us now to talk a little bit more about this. Thanks for joining us again, Mike. Hi, Carrie Lee. Good to be with you again. Well, when you and I talked last week, we were we kind of remarked how engaged people were during the health care vote. Like it or hate it, the country was talking about it. But one week later, politics are getting a little ugly, some say, uh, like spitting on congressmen, for example. Well, I mean, this is an ugly time, and the ugliness started, quite frankly, when the Democrats uh, did this cram down of health care reform uh, and gave Americans something that we don't want anything to do with. And so, you know, there's a lot of passion on both sides of the aisle. I think these accounts of, uh, you know, congressmen being spat upon are greatly exaggerated. Uh, some of the slurs that were supposedly said, there's no documentation, there's no corroboration. I mean, there have been a lot of instances where people have made these kinds of claims, and it just wasn't true. True, but mm -hmm. you know, I think liberal Democrats are terrified at the prospect of tens of thousands of people uh, converging upon uh, you know sleepy little uh, the sleepy little town in Nevada where Harry Reid hails from, uh, Searchlight Nevada or whatever, and, and seeing the passion, the energy, the excitement, the patriotism, and the deep concern about the direction our country is headed. And this is a beautiful thing. And so we can't let a handful of crazies you know derail what is a pretty exciting movement, and that's this Tea Party movement that people seem to be uh, so enamored with right now. And, and, you know, it's really about knowing where that line is, the crazies versus the passion. Some are concerned that the passion will ignite the crazies to get violent. You know, how about the threats on Congressman Cantor and his family, the suspect, by the way, from right. here in Philly. Now, he apparently has significant psychiatric issues. Uh, he shouldn't be lumped in with the other incidents we're seeing, do you think? Well, they all have psychiatric issues. I mean, come on, cutting gas lines and you know, if there was spitting and, and these terrible things that supposedly were said. But listen, there, there are, there's a handful of crazies in every category. And as for the threats, I'm sorry, this, this is the big leagues. I mean, I, I get a threat a week and I'm just a big mouth on the radio. I mean, you know, that's on a good week. I mean, uh, you know, if I don't get a threat, I wonder if I'm doing something wrong. It's just part of being in the public eye and, and having this, this passion. And this is a terrible debate. I mean, Carrie Lee, people know know that the health care reform debate has all the components. It's about mm. a loss for our side, a loss of liberty. It's about uh, life and death over the uh, funding, the federal funding of abortions. Um, it, it's about taxation. It's about all the things that, that the economy, a sixth of our nation's economy. So of course people are going to get angry. And then of that category of angry Americans, millions of us, they're going to be a handful of crazies. Not a big deal. The left just wants to make a big deal out of it because they want to distract Americans from the, uh, the prospect of getting clobbered in the midterm elections come November. So do you think the Tea Partiers are going in a good direction while some say they're extreme, others believe mightily in the movement? What do you think? I, I'm afraid that too many people think the Tea Party movement should be a party. It's not going to succeed as a third party. The Tea Party movement is just that. It's an ideology. It's a mindset. It's a, it's a representative uh, belief that we need to have less government, not more. We've got to have, uh, you know, strong national security. We have to have fiscal conservatism, you know, strong, solid core values that made the country great. And if we can focus on the fact that it's a movement and not a party, I get nervous when I hear about, you know, a Tea Party spokesman or a Tea Party candidate. The Republican Party needs to embrace the Tea Party movement wholeheartedly. The Tea Partiers have to realize that they'd much rather be aligned with the Republican Party than the Democrats. And, uh, and, then, and then the Republican Party will be stronger and bigger and better than ever. And again, back to that la landslide in November. That's right. a good thing for, again, my side of the aisle. Well, we'll see about the other side of the aisle as well. Is the passion going to die down or is this the new reality of politics? Only time will tell. Mike Gallagher, thanks for talking with us as always. Sure thing, Carrie Lee. Take care. Thank you. You as well. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie getting pressured tonight to join other states in the lawsuit challenging health care reform. 
Two state Republican Assembly members from Monmouth County are urging Governor Christie to join in the suit challenging the constitutionality of the law. And the governor says he'll wait for assessments from the state attorney general and health commissioner before making a decision. All right, have you seen this new video by singer Erica Badu? It's causing a lot of controversy. Check out the video. You can see Badu there stripping while walking to a, you can't see that actually, but trust me, towards the JFK assassination site. Now, apparently once naked, she collapses as if she were shot. The city of Dallas upset, not just by the content of the video, but also the fact that Badu failed to get the proper permit to require to film there. Let's talk idol. Cara Diaguardi will be showing fans she's more than just a judge. The singer-songwriter will be doing her first show next month at the Borgata. She'll be singing some of the hits that have made a number of other artists famous. She says she's excited to hit the stage. It's going to be a great night. I'm going to sing some of my hits, tell you the stories behind writing them, and just have a great time. There'll be questions and answers, and I hope you guys show up. I'm really excited. It's a beautiful place. Check it out. Sounds like a party, Kara. And you can, of course, check out Kara tomorrow night right here on American Idol on Fox 29. The top 10 are performing. The action starts at 8 o'clock again right here on Fox. An interesting story coming up next. Expectant parents hear a pitch to save their newborn's cord blood. We're going to introduce you to a family where it's made a world of difference in their son's development. More in just two minutes. Natalie is the last one to leave home. And not a moment too soon, right? <laughs> Howard and Linda were saving for Natalie's college since she was born. She's going to need a lot of stuff. Those everyday things we didn't plan on. So we showed them how Wachovia's Way to Save program could help. Every time they swipe their check card to make a purchase, a dollar is automatically transferred from their checking account to their savings account. And they get a bonus just for saving. My bedroom is going to be turned into an office for them. That's what I'm giving back to them. <laughs> With you when it's time to save. Wachovia, a Wells Fargo company. We've had the van almost as long as the kids. She's like a member of the family. And when she needs service, there's only one place we'll take her, Amco. They've got nearly 900 locations, and if her check engine light comes on, their technicians diagnose it quickly. They keep her running strong for a lot less than my dealer. People who know, call 1-800-GO-AMCO. Check engine light on? Let the experts at Amco check it for free. Double A, MCO. As long as we're winding up our doing dials, let's wind them with precision. Open our throttle to even more selection and turn that saving swagger up full tilt. So when the time comes to bust open a can of doing, we've got all the tools for all the things we need to make them happen. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Right now, get Scott's Naturescapes mulch for the new lower price of just $388. Come here, have a good day. Coming through. I'm looking for an argument. A what? An argument. You know, a good old-fashioned Donnybrook. Is that like a Duesenberg? No, a Slugfest, a Fracas, a Dusto, a Nabrolio. Do they still make them? CarSense has pre-owned cars in just about every make and model. So around here, you can get into anything you want, except an argument. You have to know how to stand up to these people. CarSense, one less thing in life to negotiate. Also in health news tonight, stem cells, you know, we hear a lot about their potential. Keithy Askin tells us there's now a new clinical trial that hopes to help patients from the very beginning. You ready? Zip your jacket up. Let's go, woohoo! A rugged ride for River and his mom is a perfect fit. Okay, turn around. Mom turned this into exercise and hip therapy to build her son's strength. Where do you want to go? I'll just kind of Your choice. River is stepping through life with an extra challenge. Good walking. The three and a half year old has cerebral palsy. River is doing tummy time in the swing. This helps River strengthen his upper body. Kevin and Teresa O'Shaughnessy say one thing that strengthened their son was the decision they made before he was even born. His parents paid $2,000 plus a monthly fee to save River's cord blood. <laughs> This is video of River later receiving an infusion of his own cord blood at Duke University. His mother, Teresa. Right away we noticed he had an alertness about him that wasn't there before we got there. You ready? Here we go. His success or his um, progress seemed to 
come more rapidly, you know, by probably 50 percent. Now researchers at Medical College of Georgia are conducting the first clinical trial to determine if stem cells from umbilical cord blood can improve the quality of life for children with cerebral palsy. The school tells us the FDA is involved. I think it's amazing. I think it's so great. That's what we need. The study will include 40 children whose parents stored cord blood at Cord Blood Registry, CBR, in Tucson. CBR stores the cord blood of about 300,000 children. David Zitlow of CBR. But what research is really focusing on is how can we use stem cells, which really are a building block of the body, to go in and repair specific tissue. Until very recently, medical experts thought the brain had little capability to recover from trauma or injury. This is CBR video. The potential healing mechanisms are still being researched. A brain injury can cause cerebral palsy. The CDC says 1.4 million Americans suffer traumatic brain injuries each year. Even uh, simple concussions repeated can cause injuries that uh, lead to damage. So I think the potential is tremendous. He became strong so quick, you know, and able to hold his body up better and not be so wobbly. His parents say River is moving in the right direction, Good. considering they were told he wouldn't walk. Yay, River! Yep. And they don't want other families left behind. I'm Keith Yaskin, Fox News. Very good. If you would like to know more about the clinical trial, head to MyFoxPhilly.com. We've posted links with information there. Check that out. Well, next, all of us have been jonesing for some junk food at one time or another. But a new link in the science of those cravings and illegal addictions. We're coming right back with more on that. Inside the mind of George Costanza. I didn't know whether to try and keep up from falling or zip up. <laughs> what did you do? I zipped up. Uh, yeah, sign up. Next. As long as we're winding up our doing dials, let's wind them with precision. Open our throttle to even more selection and turn that saving swagger a full tilt. So when the time comes to bust open a can of doing, We've got all the tools for all the things we need to make them happen. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Right now, get Scott's Naturescapes mulch for the new lower price of just $388. Leadership isn't given, it's earned. Now Ford quality is unsurpassed by Honda and Toyota. And more and more people are realizing why Ford Edge is raising the bar. Now, during our leadership sales drive, you can get 0% financing for five years plus 1,000 cash. That's both 0% and 1,000 cash. Plus, drive past gas stations faster with 265 horsepower and 25 miles per gallon. Or lease an Edge for only $389 a month. With zero do it signing, you sign and just drive away at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. The only thing between you and an unforgettable day is a reservation. Discover what it feels like to get this close. Why design a vehicle with 88 vibration control measures? Why engineer 20 available systems that sense and respond to your needs before you're even aware of them? because the average driver spends over 40,000 hours of their lifetime driving. The 2010 Lexus ES, uniquely designed to make every hour feel just as remarkable as the first. Lease the 2010 ES350 for $4.79 a month for 36 months with $11.79 due at signing. Celebrate Empire's 50th anniversary with our gift to you. Free installation on quality name brand carpet. Shop at home and enjoy the wide selection. Great prices and next day installation Empire is famous for. With no interest for a year. Plus, right now, we'll install your new carpet absolutely free. It's our gift to you. But hurry, free installation won't last long. Call today. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Today. 
Tonight, Philadelphia police need your help finding a missing teenager. Police say 13-year-old Brianna Sanders was last seen this evening on South Norwood Street. We know that she's white, weighs about 180 pounds, has blue eyes, we're told, and brown hair. She was last seen wearing a purple sweatshirt and sweatpants. Now, Brianna suffers from autism and frequents the rec center at 24th and Wolf Streets. If you've seen her, if you do see her, please call police. All right, a question for you. Is food ad addiction the same as drug addiction? Huh, well, researchers put rats on a high-calorie junk food diet and get this, parts of their brains linked to pleasure lit up. Kind of the same way they would if they were activated by cocaine or heroin. Now, here's the scary part. Even after the rats lost access to junk food, the brain changes continued. The study is published online in the March issue of Nature Neuroscience. Pretty interesting, but what's not so interesting is the fact that we're getting more rain through the night. It's going to keep on coming. More rain through the night. Flooding is a potential, but yeah. we have really great weather in store for the weekend. We just have to keep thinking about You guys just keep riding that. on that, but I there's know. good weather coming. Because we're kind of giving you the bad news <laughs> now. Let's go to them. Check things out at the Admiral Wilson Boulevard earlier this evening and as you can see still the flooding problems that we had overnight last night and early this morning and that will likely be the case for your morning commute tomorrow morning so keep that in mind. Ultimate Doppler HD live shows the rain still moving through the area primarily though across the state of New Jersey right now and that will be the case through at least the next several hours but the rest of us are going to be getting in on that heavy rain action as we head through the overnight hours. So temperature wise out there actually not that bad. Thankfully, it's warm enough to support this as rain. 54 degrees at Philadelphia International and at Trenton and Atlantic City. 44 up in the Poconos and we are at 52 degrees at this hour in Allentown. Here's what we have so far as of earlier this evening. Just under two inches of rain here in Philadelphia, so quite a bit. 2.7 in Atlantic City, just under two inches in Wrightstown and also Millville and 1.38 inches of rain in Wilmington, Delaware. Still some flood watches and warnings to talk about. The warnings in the brighter green along the coastline and and the flood watch in effect for the rest of the area through tomorrow. Also, coastal flooding has a potential. We're under a coastal flood warning for most of the area, and we have the high tides coming in uh, between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. tomorrow morning, and of course, that would mean minor tidal flooding as well. So keep that in mind. If you live along the coastline, there is a coastal flood advisory. Right now, we're looking at the rain, of course, mainly east, as we just showed you on the radar, but through the overnight hours and into early parts of tomorrow morning, during the morning commute, the rain is going to be heavy at times and then as we progress through the afternoon on Tuesday the rain will start to taper off a little bit so we'll call it occasional rain for Tuesday afternoon and even a little bit of drizzle possible into Wednesday morning and then that's it through the holiday weekend we are expecting to see not only dry weather but lots of sunshine as well but we got to get through the yucky stuff first of course as this main area of low pressure this coastal storm pulls its way off to the north and east it will be windy through the day tomorrow as well and again more of that heavy rain through through the morning hours tomorrow. Keep that in mind. Set the alarm clock a little bit early. The commute is going to be tough for the day tomorrow. Overnight tonight, 45 rain and wind increasing. Gusts up to 35 miles per hour and tomorrow will be windy and it will be rainy, especially in the morning hours. Only 50 for the high and that rain will be tapering off in the afternoon hours. But here comes the payoff Wednesday, 63 or 60 degrees and of course we'll clear out the skies in the afternoon and then 73 degrees on Thursday. Sunshine into Friday. We're looking <clears> for 75 Friday. Saturday, 78 degrees. Sunny and warm even into Easter Sunday. We're going to take you through the next five days with the trend. We've got the Easter holiday coming up and the first few days of the month of April. Sunny and What's dry. What's 50 doing in there? Well, we're going to get a little bit cooler. <laughs> it is a very I fickle time of year, but <laughs> enjoy the streak of actually Easter Sunday teetering on the upper 70s to near 80 wow, degrees. Wow, something else. We'll take it. Enjoy it at least it's going to be dry when we have the cooler temperatures. And it's starting to look like baseball weather. I think Cuz is here. He's talking You're about right. the fills, right? That's exactly <laughs> right, KL. Baseball season. We're getting close to the start of it, and the fills, two big cogs in the bullpen, could be close to returning as well. We'll update you on the health of J.C. Romero and Brad Lidge. And what is that man right there? Eagles offensive coordinator Marty Morningweg doing at the pro day for the top quarterback in the NFL's upcoming draft. And what does that mean for the future of number five? We'll tell you coming up in sports. It's a violation to leave. Big companies trying to get a handle on that new health care law. The CEO of AK Steel exclusively telling me that his company's costs are indeed heading up and he'll likely have to raise the price of his product. 
That company already taking a $31 million charge. Some good news, consumer spending increasing for the fifth straight month, rising by a fraction in February. The Dow gaining another 45 points, settling in at a fresh 18-month high. And the government is planning to sell its stake in Citigroup. Treasury holds nearly 8 billion shares of city stock. At today's prices, the government will rake in a profit of around $7.5 billion. And Apple announcing that its iPad will hit store shelves on Saturday. The tablet device will be available in all Apple stores and most Best Buy locations then. The Man of Steel is worth his weight in gold. The first comic book featuring Superman just selling for a million and a half dollars. That is a record. And that is business. I'm Neil Cavuto. The city has a heartbeat with broken glass. The countdown, the opening day is on. One week from today, Phil's begin Operation Red October, Roman numeral three against the Washington Nationals. And on hand throughout the first pitch, none other than President Barack Obama. Now down to Clearwater, Phil's taking on the Braves. Jay Happ started. The lefty who had such a surprising rookie year comes in quietly as the number four starter. And outside of one bad outing this spring, he's been again consistent. Today a little wild, he walked five and five innings, but he has an uncanny way of working out of trouble. Today, again, only allowed two runs. Now tied at four in the ninth. Oh my, you're going to see. There he is. Eric Hinsky rounds the bases. Leadoff bomb pins a spring loss on the fills. Look at that thing. Ooh, still going. Beautiful, right? It's all right. It's just spring. The real news, though, took place over at the team's minor league complex where reliever J.C. Romero threw the live batters for the first time this spring. Looked sharp. Romero faced four batters, didn't let a ball out of the infield. Struck out two, including this one you're going to see. Dominic Brown, bang, sit down, Dom. Meanwhile, this follows good news regarding Brad Lidge, who threw off the mound on Saturday. Both relievers are trying to make it back for the Phil's first homestand, which begins April 12th. I can only go as fast as my body uh, as my body takes me, and um, at some point, you know, we have to make sure I get the arm strength. Uh, you can't just uh, keep trying to get out there and, and do more and more if your if your body's not ready to do it. If I could recover soon enough, you know, I'd be ready to go a lot quicker. But I, it's all about you know how I could how I feel the next day, and tomorrow's going to be I, I think a huge day for me. Myself and JC are both, we, we've talked about it, and we really want to be ready for that opening uh, home opener. And, um, you know, that's what, uh, that's what we're shooting for. All right, now let's move on to the Eagles. The draft less than a month away, so it's due diligence time for the Birds. Here's a list of players who are going to work out. Eagles either have worked out or will watch work out. Now you can see the top of the list. My favorite right there, Eric Berry from Tennessee. He should be long gone by the time the Eagles pick at 19, but they could trade up. Here's a list of offensive players. Now, the Eagles, this draft right here is rich with defense. And I think the Birds really need to get defensive coordinator Sean McDermott some playmakers. Now, the Eagles were represented today for Sooners quarterback Sam Bradford's pro day in Norman, Oklahoma. Bradford could go number one overall to the Rams. Look at that. There's offensive coordinator Marty Morningweg with his buddy Mike Holmgren. Now, I wouldn't read too much of that from a Birds perspective. The Eagles wouldn't have an opening for a young quarterback unless they were blown away by a ridiculous offer for Kevin Cobb. But let's bring it back full circle. Where Bradford goes could have an impact on the trade market. Meanwhile, my sources still say Oakland is a front runner to land McNabb with the number of serious suitors whittled to three or four teams. I'm hearing Eagles would prefer to make a deal involving McNabb within a week to 10 days. Uh, now, lastly, guys, the Sixers record of futility is still alive. The Nets uh -huh. won their 10th game, so that means the Sixers are still the worst team in the history oh, of the NBA. Yeah. Right? Yay! On that note, uh, not a great <laughs> forecast Yippee. either, right? Well, we actually have a winner <laughs> toward the weekend. Now we got to get through the rain first. Be careful tomorrow morning. Absolutely. That's it for us tonight. Good day starts at 4.30 a.m. Make note of that. Also, Seinfeld's coming up next. Good night, everybody.